Pacific Alliance, but also uh, in a, such an efficient way. And also for sustainability, and this is not something that came as a consequence of the uh, pandemic. In fact, since uh, 2016, we had a declaration from Cartagena so that the countries of the Pacific Alliance could be centered in how to develop more sustainable uh, economy, more competitive, especially because of that advantage. And it's such as Susan was saying, these are economies that we have greenhouse effect emissions that are very low compared to other countries, compared to other um, countries such as the US, uh, China and other countries, but we're very vulnerable, especially those who are who are in the tropical region, such as in Colombia and Ecuador. And we have a very high risk. And it is for this reason that we need to really uh, mitigate the climate change, which is something that we need to do, first of all, for at an ethical level for humankind, because we have that moral obligation uh, and I believe that this is a great mechanism of a pragmatic uh, integration, flexible integration, uh, which is uh, very open. We have been demolishing tariffs uh, for in by 22 uh, percent of products, but this is not the most important thing in an integration system. It's more important how we identify um, a value chain that we can identify from the production of each country and this uh, cross-cutting item of sustainability for all of us. I'd like to give you a concrete figure in the case of Colombia. We issue less than 0.6% of uh, greenhouse uh, uh, emissions in Colombia in 2020. We generated uh, 231 million tons and if we really compare this with what we were issuing five years, we have an increase of 25% in just five years. What does this imply? That if we keep up this pace, it's going to be unsustainable living on the planet. And this is why President Ivan Duque took over this commitment to reduce by 51% the emission of uh, uh, emissions by 2030, meaning that instead of continuing increasing by 25% in the uh, next five or six years, we will have a decrease in this figure by 180 tons, which we really show a great commitment. And also there is a clear commitment from Colombia to be able to be a carbon neutral country by 2040. So Sano was saying then this is part of the investment. It is clear that one fundamental element for competitiveness and for the access to markets is to have green seals and zero emissions, um, greenhouse emissions. And then today, for example, Colombia, uh, where uh, most of the uh, emission is there is in agriculture and uh, cattle and so on. In all of our countries, this is a common problem. So we have to see that the investments that we get uh, uh, gives us that technological advantages and an investment that will allow us to have clean investments to continue being at the earth. So with these integrated value chains then to Europe, to Asia, to the US, and surely we'll have products that can be placed with a better price precisely because we have advanced faster in the reduction of emissions. So we are continue uh, looking for investments and uh, the, during this process in pro tempore, we have identified 11 uh, sites. Um, the issue of mobility for the industries of electrical automobiles and then the ocean that is also uh, basic for the production of uh, foodstuffs, but also for investments, uh, especially in non-conventional renewable energies. So the potential for the investors, uh, uh, the foreign investors is extraordinary and the growth of our economies and the generation of jobs is also something very important. So in this way that you see, you saw the most important aspects of this alliance and then we have 260 million 
uh, inhabitants and then 40% of the GDP in Latin America and Central America and the Caribbean. And we have really uh, some numbers for uh, foreign uh, commerce that are very impressive. And this uh, new addition of Singapore is going to even have a more qualitative or quantitative value in the alliance. Now we are very excited that now when uh, Colombia we is going to have, um, you know, be the president and then Mexico and also the council. So we really are hoping that then we are going to have Ecuador and also Korea's new members. Korea is a great economy with his uh, per capita income that is very important. And then for Korea after the COVID, they had a green and sustainable growth. Thank you. Minister Aleman the uh, crisis uh, all over the world has deepened the inequalities and the structure was of gender of the countries of the Pacific Alliance. Uh, so this panel has a lot of women actually, well, it has four women actually, I'm sorry. So we are a minority, this is very good. So in this context, uh, uh, what measures uh, the blog is going to undertake to promote uh, the empowerment uh, of women and to strengthen the uh, protagonists in the strategies of uh, economic uh, recovery, which is very, very important. Women are very important for economic recovery. Ministers, thank you very much, Susan, uh, for the question and for having us here in your house. We always feel uh, very happy here in the Council of the Americas. And in any case, I want to thank uh, you for this possibility. Uh, after uh, doing a thing, we have to applaud the effort from Colombia. Precisely this year, the, during this pro tempore presidency, President Duque already uh, explained which ones are the important advances that were done in a very short time. And uh, also to reinforce the idea of Marta Lucia, that there is a good way to measure the uh, success of an organization, and that's the interest of other people to become members. And then we already have Singapore, uh, Korea is in the pipeline, just to say it like that. And then, well, we are uh, re going to receive uh, with open arms uh, Ecuador, who should have been in this alliance from day one. Um, having said that, I believe that the alliance was a pioneer, Susan, in terms of uh, incorporating the gender uh, aspect in all its vision or simply with just, uh, not just just saying it, but the Santiago Declaration and the adoption of the uh, way, because these are uh, measures that are very concrete on that list. What do we have to do to incorporate more actively women and to have a more uh, gender equality? According to whatever was, uh, uh, pointed in the documents of the lands, we have to look into two, four things. The first is to promote the access of women uh, in leadership uh, places and uh, making decisions in the social and political spheres. And this is to look at the incorporation of women, not only uh, just through the uh, financial aspect, but to look at it uh, globally and to suppose that when uh, women have leadership roles and that are important. Well, somehow that has an effect on the different activities. To say it differently, women know better than we men to discover which uh, are the areas uh, that need more help and to find good solutions. So I also believe that to uh, foster the entrepreneurship of women and the labor force is very, are very important. And then if you look into the regions, even uh, mm -hmm. the Chilean economy, the incorporation of women in the uh, workforce is still less uh, than in other developed countries. Uh, so to worry about the strengthening of the, the incorporation of women in, in the labor force, it is very, very important. And third, there are still barriers, uh, Susan, for the full 
incorporation of women in activities. During the last few years, we have advanced eliminating barriers and then ending discrimination. But if you look carefully in each one of the uh, societies, we still have barriers to uh, eliminate and there are important decisions that I have to make uh, um, and then others that have to be eliminated. So, and I think also that there is a great opportunity uh, on two things. First, I am convinced that uh, there has to be public policies concentrated uh, specifically on women and overcome the gaps uh, uh, that we have. Well, they required, uh, actually, if you want to call it that way, uh, with positive uh, discrimination, uh, concentrating on the entrepreneurship of women and the possibility that women do have this entrepreneur spirit, they can export easier, in an easier way. So we have to look into public policies that have a concentration that is directly linked to women. And uh, well, um, I think that there is a pioneer uh, decision and a very positive one uh, to incorporate uh, totally uh, women for the progress and uh, improvement of all our countries. Thank you. I think that if you have um, the incorporation of uh, more women, the recovery of uh, women, the, the recovery of countries is going to be better. Uh, there is uh, evidence of that, yes. The contribution that women can give uh, can grow enormously. And this is going in all the fields. For example, Susan, we have nowadays uh, a convention, a conventional uh, constitution well it's been changed so we actually established that it had to be a parity convention mandatory it was mandatory that it would be half men and half women this is also a political signal as to where are we going Uh, this is true. And then also the Congress, the, the president of the Congress uh, is also a woman, a minister comes. Another thing that is actually is very close to me, COVID-19 has brought enormous challenges for the micro and small and medium sized companies among those, the digitalization and the inclusion in the regional uh, value chains. Uh, what measures uh, are you reviewing? Uh, what plans has the Pacific Alliance to be able to support these companies to transform the challenges in opportunities for the international market? This is another key uh, aspect uh, to be able to grow. Well, thank you very much to the Council of Americas for the opportunity and to my colleagues, the, the ones that are here in the panel. Uh, which is so important. In first, as a new government, uh, we, we are like the new uh, that arrived in the little village, well, as a government. Okay, I want to ratify, first of all, the commitment and the will of the Peruvian uh, government to be able to participate actively in this Pacific Alliance that has been so important for us during the last 10 years. And uh, we see so much potential for the future. So it has been very important up to now, but I think we still have a, a great space to be able to work to help our countries and to work together. And I think that is important. Uh, the first presentation from our government to ratify a commitment towards the uh, Pacific Alliance and uh, towards the objectives and then all this and that. So well, I start uh, with this issue that is so important. Secondly, well, uh, President Duque just showed some of the great advances of the Pacific Alliance, but I think that one issue that is essential that we have to consider that is important for the development of small companies and also for what the Pacific Alliance can do for them, it is the base of free commerce, free services, free circulation of people. I think that for small companies, uh, particularly, and these small little barriers of how to travel to the other country, how to do business with other countries, those are 
costly, specifically for small companies. Is a big company is going to have a deal with a billion dollars or a little bit less? Well, that small um, gap is just not so difficult. But for a small company that want to sell a hundred thousand dollars in another country, to be able to have the ease of what the the the, the businessman can travel and has not going to have a problem with the visas and, and that the payment system is functional and there are not additional cost of uh, uh, taxes and the commerce of the services from one country to the other can flow freely. I think that is something that we have to take into consideration. I think that the Pacific Alliance give us from the beginning, from the just the uh, an infrastructure, which is very important for small and medium-sized companies. And I think that this is the essential point, according to what I think that we have as a base and we can become okay, can become more potential. And then the other is the, the value chains that has always been very present in the Pacific Alliance. One of the potentials the value chains can actually can help to connect small companies with the regional markets and also with international markets. Many times, in spite of these uh, facilities, uh, uh, small companies to connect to bigger uh, uh, markets uh, is not so easy. And to promote these value chains is one of the big objectives of the Pacific Alliance. That's one of the mechanisms that in many parts of the world permits small companies to connect. Uh, or maybe they can have the little pieces they provided that then they can connect through the uh, value chains through uh, that with the world. And that is something that the Pacific Alliance has great potential. Um, since this uh, business integration uh, also allows and facilitates the connection uh, of small companies with the rest of the world. And I think that uh, creates a great potential for you uh, to the potential uh, to the Pacific Alliance. And of course, there are other issues where the Pacific Alliances will have many opportunities to support small companies. The movement of services, uh, 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 the financing for small companies can become better and then we can learn from each other. And we can also can give uh, uh, transborder services for financing, technical assistance, uh, the new technological advances that are common in different countries that are favorable for small companies. So I think the Pacific Alliance has a great potential. And as you were saying, Susan, it is very important. For Peru, I think it is particularly important because it's a country that small companies are. The ones that give employment, most of the population is the sector that we need to push uh, more so that its productivity will generate well-being, and it is a wide uh, um, and it's a priority for all of us. And I think the the post-COVID reactivation will have uh, this inclusiveness. The social and economic inclusion is so needed in the in the post-COVID period, and then it gives a particular importance to small companies that uh, the government has as a particular important. Very good. This is very important, as you are saying. Uh, Under Secretary de la Moria, welcome virtually. The pandemic has affected world, global trade, interrupting the supply chain of many global companies to the point that many are considering or are developing plans of relocalization. What are the advantages that are offered individually or jointly by the countries of the Pacific Alliance for those countries that are considering how to change the investment target? I believe that's a very important subject as well, an opportunity. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Susan, for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, I'd like to send my greetings to the ministers. It's a great pleasure to send my greetings to the 
Chilean minister, to the president of foreign affairs, and minister of industry also to the Pacific Alliance and to Minister Frankie. Thank you for participating in this event for the it's very important for the Alliance and this allow us to convey these messages on the importance of the Pacific Alliance, but especially the contribution that we can offer to the Pacific Alliance and to the citizens of the Pacific Alliance. I'd like to point out a few subjects that you have mentioned, Susan, that have to do with how the Pacific Alliance is placed within this repositioning of the supply chains. I believe that the Pacific Alliance has great benefits, offers great advantages in this uh, restructuring of the supply chains. And why so? We are an integration scheme at a regional level and we are open. These four countries have common visions vis-a-vis -vis the benefit offered by the productive integration trade and investments. We are an area where we offer free movement of goods, services of people and capital. And I believe that this has placed us in a privileged position to the four of us to face the pandemic challenges. And why is that? Because the Pacific Alliance structure offers the flexibilities that are required by the structure of the supply chains regionally and globally. We have made huge strides within the Pacific Alliance. First of all, I like to say that we offer clarity, certainty and foreseeability when it comes to the rules of the game. And also thanks to the legal stability of the Pacific Alliance uh, commercial protocol. We are a region in which we are willing to continue promoting all the productive connections that we have been able to create. We've been able to value this integration through very concrete actions. For instance, the interoperability of the uh, foreign trade windows, the use of digitalization and e-tools for foreign trade, and also for the development of uh, productive connections uh, in the country. I believe that the COVID-19 pandemic has really challenged the region. How can we make sure that these value chains, productive chains are resilient, sustainable, and at the same time, competitive and efficient. But the context offered by the Pacific Alliance, the institutional context, in my opinion, is helping us to position us so that the companies, Latin companies, regional and multinational companies, can consider us as the ideal destination in this restructuring process. For instance, for investment, we facilitate investments on the Pacific Alliance. We have a pipeline of investment plans in infrastructure in our countries. And lastly, I believe that we need to point out, just like it has already been mentioned, that we've been able to conclude a negotiation with Singapore so that they can be an associated state of the Pacific Alliance, which also emphasizes our vocation to see the region of the Pacific Alliance in which we can see the positive dynamic increase in, of growth, but we also have value chains that are being created and are key for us. In this sense, I believe that the Pacific Alliance has faced important challenges regarding productive supply chains, but we've been able to respond efficiently to these challenges. Thank you so much, Susan.
Minister Lombana, how has the digital transformation process taken place, considering its orientation towards the digital trade and in e-trade to boost development and competitivity? Another very important subject that um, has taken uh, leapfrogs uh, uh, the digitalization in Latin America. So, Susan, thank you so much for your invitation. Uh, very special greetings. Uh, Minister Alaman has been so nice to meet again after meeting for the first time in Lima. Minister Frankie, thank you so much to all the ministers, our presidents of Pro Colombia, and specifically our ministers from Peru and Ecuador and trade with whom I hope to work during the last months in uh, President Duque administration. Thank you so much for being here. I believe that we have all realized that during the pandemic, technology was key so that our economies could continue to grow for the supply, not just in our countries, but supply globally, and key also to be able to work, educate, and to entertain our, us, and to socialize in this digital environment, and as a tool, of course, to go beyond borders and i believe that the pacific alliance created the opportunity to speed up this integration process that has been so important as we know we have the potential as consumers of 170 million consumers in the pacific alliance this 170 million out of this 170 million 120 are connected and they have access to social media and this mechanism to uh, strengthening uh, e-trade within our territory has been key based on error monitor calculations the sales in 2020 through the mechanisms and e-trade in these four countries uh, were um an increase of 75% of e-trade in our countries. This situation of a, a digital regional market in the Pacific Alliance has become a priority right now. The goal is to have a standardized space without cross-border barriers that continue to promote this e-trade. And to this end, as President Duque was mentioning, we have designed a roadmap jointly with some pillars that can allow us to make progress in this process. We have set some specific goals first to improve connectivity access uh, for member states second to create an environment to promote the exchange of goods and digital services and thirdly to develop a digital economy that can promote growth productivity and employment and in this roadmap we have set some specific sections in which we need to continue work on, working on uh, by the member states to improve access to digital access with a robust structure in our countries that will allow us to promote deployment of high speed better regional interconnection and also connectivity of a higher number of devices and also spaces to exchange information and good practices especially in the regulatory bodies of telecommunications in the countries which will allow us for instance to have mechanisms such as the elimination of roaming service with the corresponding cost and standardization of bands in 5g in each of these countries third reduction of barriers to electronic trade we've already mentioned this as far as interoperability in digital safety protection of uh, online consumer and to continue making progress of our uh, one service window which has been fundamental in the e-trade we have made great progress but we still have some uh, elements to iron out in order to have this 100% uh, interconnectivity for this is very important the support by the pacific alliance uh, uh, business council we believe that through the participation of the private sector of also of the academia and civil society have been 
very important to make progress hand in hand with finance ministers who are also doing a following up of this uh, digitalization process and progress. We also have two advisory support elements from the development uh, um, interbank with Finovista, we've been able to identify uh, fintech developments in each of these countries to know the trends of the market in this area and also the dynamics of uh, uh, skills and corporations in the traditional financial states with this new digital financial tool. Additionally, also with the support of Inter-American Development Bank, we've done a comparative study with digital transformations and different digital levels of payment systems within the Pacific Alliance countries in order to identify regulations of payment systems in each of the countries, including all the trends of activities, uh, products, and specifically uh, monitoring, supervision tools. We believe that with all these actions undertaken, we'll be able to accomplish the goals and our vision that we have set for ourselves for 2030 in the Pacific Alliance in order to have a more compact hub, completely identified with the digital transformation. I firmly believe in digital transformation. Minister Aleman, Andres, one of the effects uh, of the restrictions uh, as a, a consequence of the pandemic was the close down of many companies. However, at the same time, another effect was the boost towards production and uh, uh, trade digitalization, especially in the small and middle companies. How the Pacific Alliance can be a space to continue with this change? What concrete actions have you identified to bridge the gap in the digital talent? Correct, Susan. I can uh, respond with that with two uh, words that are very much in line with whatever has been said here. The key to be able to foster digitalization on the one hand has to do with a more robust infrastructure that will allow a connectivity that will be faster, not only faster uh, connectivity, but also an inclusive one that can reach people that, that normally would not have that access. And that, of course, has to do basically with 5G and the interconnections that we can have uh, among the different countries to be able to advance. But that is, like you can say, the hardware, the software is training. And it is very important to be able to advance fast in training in uh, digital skills because it's not going to have all the material possibilities if the human factor, just to say it like that, doesn't uh, come hand in hand. And uh, the two key factors is a robust infrastructure and localized uh, uh, training in those sectors that are mostly needed. Well, I wanted to say two additional things. When we talk about digitalization, well, this is the best uh, uh, show that even the worst crisis create opportunities. And here we have an advance that was enormous in digitalization that we had to take advantage of. But that not only has a financial importance, it also has a political one. And to that effect, uh, well, it is that nowadays we have uh, uh, some attacks against free commerce. Uh, uh, against integration. And one of the arguments that are being used, uh, the Minister of Peru was already talking about this, is that free uh, trade would only be for big business, for big companies. So we have to be able to show that small and medium sized companies can participate actively in the integration phases and export. export uh, also, because that way uh, free commerce is going to be legitimate and it's going to be free and we are going to avoid uh, uh, remarks that are negative. So then you can also have to think in the enormous inclusive power 
that uh, the small and medium sized countries that has to do with digitalization. We can also reach women, uh, but also vulnerable groups and also, for example, to uh, the original uh, uh, people, um, the autochthonous people for the integration that also uh, is part of the alliance. And then lastly, I would like to mention that uh, Minister Frankie, during your presentation was very important in terms of the Peru, Peru's commitment towards the alliance, those four countries, and we hope that uh, very soon we'll have Ecuador and also as associated uh, Korea and also some others that want to come along the way. I think those are very important things. And, and then uh, these are very significant because uh, these uh, four countries, we have to continue going on hand in hand to be able to achieve the goals that we have set ourselves. Well, I think because uh, in that way, each one of the four countries have more opportunities uh, to integrate and uh, to be able to grow. And then it gives you it gives you um, uh, a, 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 an open uh, way for the alliance, Minister Frankel. Latin America and the Caribbean has uh, investment and research, uh, which is only a seven percent, seven percent of the GDP, comparing it to other regions of the world. How the Pacific Alliance? Uh, will incorporate in its program uh, the science and technology and innovation issues. What initiatives uh, does the Alliance have in terms of science and technology to be able to contribute to the reactivation of that sector? Oh, thank you, Susan. Oh. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for your nice words, but it's a commitment of the state of Peru and we are convinced that we will all win. It's a win-win situation. We do it for other countries, but we also do it for ourselves in an alliance that is good for everybody. So I think there is no doubt that here we have created what is good and we have to continue pushing towards the future. I think that the COVID crisis has shown the enormous importance of science technology and also innovation. On the one hand is obviously the problem of vaccines and how we're going to face the pandemic and with all these different variants and then with the local ones even uh, i think even there it has been shown in the health department but also which is valid for health is also valid for other other uh, areas too and what the, the minister was also saying that is important also that this is an, an opportunity curiously uh, maybe uh, if it was not because of that, we would not have this hybrid uh, here, people face to face, people who are connecting virtually all over the world. It has pushed us, it is evident. Uh, it has been a, a jam in terms of telecommunication and digitalization and opportunities of new technologies and innovation that can be very important for our countries. I think that the the digitalization platform is very important, but there we have to do the great leap to be able to take advantage of these new uh, technological uh, advantages. You know, I, I have been a college uh, professor, so I think this creates great potential for education. I mean, many things that are presidential, but there is a great opportunity to reach other people who are very far away. This is President Castillo is very, very uh, worried about this because there's a lot of poverty in places that are very distant and the distances uh, were a great barrier, but now we can do a great leap and this is present in all our countries. I mentioned our experience, but I have no doubt that this is a problem uh, that is a common one. The Pacific Alliance has an innovation group, I think has been very important. We have to actually add the scientific and technological aspect. That, that That's what the Pacific Alliance is working on, because what is the difference here? I think that the difference is that uh, middle income countries uh, developed uh, very much, uh, taking advantage of technologies for their country, and we did it very well, but now the Pacific Alliance countries, now we have to initiate the next step. We already started, but we have to be stronger. 
we have to develop our own science, our own technology. Just to tell you, well, something that I studied uh, for a while, uh, 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 human beings that are above uh, 3,000 uh, meters uh, from the sea level, you know, actually there's a great difference in them. And there are not too many people that are live in, in these heights. Uh, in some of our countries, we have in uh, exchanges with uh, Ethiopia and Tibet, but evidently there are things that are really very particular to our countries. Our own geographical diversity that we share with some other countries, for example, with ecosystem, our cultural uh, diversity also that we share also with our people, with uh, the autochthonous uh, people, and also there is a reality that has to do with our country that gives us a potentiality that requires an investment in science and technology but to have our own uh, we take advantage of whatever the world gives us in terms of digitalization and technology that I think an open economy like the Pacific Alliance actually will benefit from that, but we have to translate it and we have to work on it on the base of our own reality. And there, Susan, the thing is that we uh, invest zero, zero, uh, 0 0.07 of the GDP and Peru is not very advanced that we have to actually um, be critical. We have a lot to do on investment, but I think that the Pacific Alliance, again, has a lot of opportunities uh, to complement. We have already an investigation exchange in academia that is also going to establish the basis. So when students and, and the people in academia can actually uh, interact, uh, we have a lot of potentiality. I was uh, even part of this exchange because my wife was uh, studying in Colombia and I was there. So we have a great possibility to work together. And we have these initiatives that are advancing, but we have a lot of space to be able to go beyond uh, uh, this line of work. Uh, that is a great opportunity for the Alliance for the future. Yeah, that is right. And uh, they are networks of university and uh, academia and research work that uh, are done uh, usually through the Pacific Alliance, but we have to go beyond. We have many more possibilities. But thank you. Uh, good luck with that because it's very important for the, uh, for the future of the Alliance. And the Secretary de la Mora, electronic commerce and the um, Computer uh, services have come into this block. Uh, what is the Alliance doing to incentivate uh, uh, electronic uh, um, commerce and to protect consumers, the uh, digital consumers? Uh, this is a very important issue all over the world. That is right. Thank you, Susan, for the question. Well, let me uh, share with the public in general and also with the ministers, what we have been uh, working on in the Pacific Alliance, I think that the pandemic uh, has actually uh, started that the uh, electronic uh, devices has actually uh, made us to uh, use uh, technology as an innovation and democratization agent, which uh, actually was not part of the beginning of the idea. Since the Alliance was uh, established, we've been working on services and uh, capital integration in the region to deepen this integration. And uh, uh, looking towards 2030, we want to create an ecosystem, a, a business ecosystem, for which we also have a, it's a, of all the, uh, uh, the ASEAN, of all the Pacific Alliance uh, countries, that will permit the inclusion of the different um, actors in the productive and entrepreneurial uh, sector. So this digital area is going to allow us to have a Pacific Alliance that will be more integrated and more inclusive. We have a roadmap to increase the regional market to be able to potentialize e-commerce. And we, I also wanted to share with you that we see the easy of electronic uh, commerce, the digitalization, the use of technology in all uh, the dimensions. 
and we know and it is a key element to uh, actually give the surety to the consumers to entrepreneurs to companies to have a digital um, area that can actually give us uh, the possibility to respond to any cybernetic attack that we might have so the four countries actually we have actually to be able to reduce the timetables and look into the cost and then to be able to uh, be able to the uh, for example the health issues uh, we have actually uh, incorporated in our uh, one window of, um, to be able to have electronic to be able that is going to be used uh, in a transborder type of way so this is a way to advance in the reduction of the uh, digital gap that will be able to uh, have the technology be closer to the citizen and then to protect personal data that is something that we continue to develop at all times because we know that that's one of the biggest threats that we have as countries and as an alliance to create trust uh, in uh, the citizens i want to share said that with the inter-american development bank we have uh, had uh, workshops and uh, to be able to accelerate uh, the presence all over the world and also we had the participation of the private sector we also have the uh, community of entrepreneurial women uh, with the importance that we have in the physical science in terms of the gender uh, issue and to have more women in the public and uh, entrepreneurial space so that these women can actually have uh, the possibility of an inter exchange information through the digital media. And then with this, I would uh, end the uh, Pacific Alliance actually protection of consumers. That is very important. The, our agencies actually uh, publish all the time the rights of consumers, uh, and that includes the online consumers through the uh, Alliance, uh, Pacific Alliance, and uh, with the idea of thinking about these uh, challenges uh, in the practices of each country in terms of this protection. We have a seminar uh, last August that we were looking to establish a virtual platform of um, uh, managing uh, controversies to protect consumers. You know, the defense for consumers is online as a task that we cannot uh, leave behind in the alliance to be able to avoid fraudulent uh, transactions um, within the roadmap uh, uh, of the regional area so that will allow us to ensure that electronic uh, or e-commerce continues to be a tool for the integration among the four countries of the pacific alliance and that uh, uh, companies of all sizes also can benefit from all this. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so thank much you for your much presentation, for your Luz, and I, I believe that, that we, don't um, we don't have any more time, but in closing, first I'd like to thank once again, my friend Marta Lucia Ramirez, Vice President and Minister of Foreign Affairs for working with us and also I'd like to thank Fabio Santurro and ProColombia for uh, organizing this event with us. Second, I'd like to offer Mexico to work on that next year because my understanding is that they are the pro tempore presidents for next year. Third, I'd like to thank panelists uh, our Vice President, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister Colum of Colombia, Maria Jimena Lombana, Minister of uh, Industry, uh, Commerce and Tourism, uh, Alemán, from Minister Alemán from Chile, Pedro Frank from Finances of Peru, Luz Maria de la Mora, Under Secretary of Foreign Affairs in Mexico, Foreign Trade in Mexico, that have uh, accompanied us virtually. Thank you so much. No, thank you. No, this is your house. It's not our house. This is the home for Latin America. And my hope is for next year to hold many meetings and to be together, not just virtually, but also in presence. Thanks, my. Uh, Thanks to everybody. We also have another video, a message from Carlos Ignacios from the 
Business Council of the Pacific Alliance. Thanks, everybody, and thanks to all those who have joined us virtually uh, in this event. The video, please. Good morning to all the members of the government and businessmen that accompany us today. I'd like to express my greetings to President of Colombia, Ivan Duque Marquez, President of Chile, Sebastián uh, Piñeda Chenique, President of Peru, Pedro Castillo Terrones, and President of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador. Also, I extend my greetings to Ms. Flavia Santoro Trujillo, Chairman of ProColombia, Ms. Susan Siegel, CEO of uh, uh, ASCOA, and the other members of the Business Council of the Pacific Alliance. For me, it's a great honor to express my gratitude on the uh, summit of the Pacific Alliance which beyond convening the presidents of our four countries gather important leaders uh, of business and investments representing a great opportunity of connectivity between our markets and also energizing development of our of our of the, our economies i like to point out the important role that these kind of initiatives play becoming the engines for economic reactivation. In this sense, I'd like to invite our governments to continue with their commitment working hand in hand with the business sector to support these activities and generally speaking all the actions that could generate greater opportunities promoting commerce investment contributing to the legal stability and that allow an economic recovery that can be resilient and sustainable in the region the pacific alliance is a very attractive region because currently is the eighth global economy representing 36 percent of the inhabitants of the latin american countries and caribbean with 231 million inhabitants as for trade even though as a result of the pandemic the exports uh, to four countries had a four percent drop we must keep in mind that after the enactment of the commercial protocol, exports were 23% currently. The Alliance exports $555 billion, representing 59% of exports of Latin America and the Caribbean. Out of this, 86% are non-mining energy products. Likewise, the Alliance represents 56% of imports of the region with $518 billion. Additionally, the block has important figures when it comes to inflation, which currently are 2.7%. And on many occasions, our economies have been recognized as the most competitive ones in the region. I'd like to share with you that in 2012, the Pacific Alliance Business Council was created among the business sectors of Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru, with a goal in mind to accompany the governments to offer recommendations and propose projects that can allow the financial development of our countries and a larger integration with the world. Thus, in December of 2020, SEAB presented recommendations for the economic recovery agenda in the region for five pillars. First, in human capital and innovation. Second, in investments and trade. Third, in sustainable and resilient recovery. Fourth, in the institutional framework to implement the recommendations in an agile and collective way. Fifth, as far as the alliance in itself and its inclusion in the world. Likewise, one of the most important initiatives that we've been working on this year under the pro tempore presidency of Colombia is the origin accumulation with the United States that offer great opportunities so that the productive sectors in our countries can seek options in order to attract greater investments in the region. 
Currently, we're identifying the higher potential sectors with whom we will be working. On the other hand, understanding the challenges that we face, especially as far as uh, uh, youth un and gender-based unemployment, uh, we have been fostering student practices in the um, Pacific Alliance, uh, where more than 500 young people have done their uh, practices in companies in the region, perfecting their personal profiles, developing more skills for their jobs. Finally, i like to reiterate the commitment of the private sector to work hand in hand with our governments to support and facilitate investment of international partners. Likewise, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite all of the companies that are here with us today to really familiarize themselves with the benefits of the Pacific Alliance when it comes to foreign investment. Thank you so much for being here with us.